At just 10 years old, Ginger Duggar Volo was thrust into the spotlight as part of her family's hit reality series, 19 Kids and County. It was a journey that lasted 17 years before she walked away from the cameras as controversy built around her family's faith and practices. Ginger says she lived in constant terror and is now sharing her truth for the first time with her new memoir. It's called Becoming Free Indeed, My Story from Disentangling Faith from fear. Ginger, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, tell me, why did you decide to write this book and to write it now? Mm -hmm. I really felt a responsibility to write this book because of the many years that I promoted these teachings publicly. And why now is because it's taken me this many years, six years of disentangling truth from error and coming to a place where I felt like I was ready to speak, like I was strong enough to be able to speak out against it. Mm. Take me back to the Institute of uh, Basic Life Principles and maybe the top three or four uh, teachings that you really mm -hmm. struggled with before you detached. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few that um, were tough for me to disentangle from, but um, one of those would be like, I mean, Bill Gothard's teachings were built on fear, manipulation, superstition, and control. And one of the superstitious ones was if you listen to music with drums, then um, you could bring harm upon yourself. And so he would tell a story of a young man who was killed in a car accident because he had drums on. He was listening to music with drums in his car. So I remember one time I was in a car with drums on and I was like freaking out thinking, okay, this is the day I die because we have this on in the car. And so things like that um, would cripple me with fear. I thought, okay, I know how to please God by doing all of these outward standards that this teacher, Bill Gothard, would say I need to do, like wearing certain clothes, avoiding certain places or, um, you know, certain courtship, relationship rules. Um, and that those were the things that I thought were either going to gain me favor with God or if I stepped outside of that would bring destruction on myself. Mm, we're looking at photos now of your family. H have they read the book? Have your parents read it? I shared the book with my parents, and so um, it'll be interesting to see how different ones of my family respond. My parents are still in IBLP, and I don't know exactly how many of my siblings have entirely left. I'll let them speak for themselves, but I just wanted to be able to open up and share this story with them and with those who are still in that setting in hopes that um, they could even see this journey that I've been on and be helped by it. Would you describe it as a cult? I would say it's cult-like in nature. It has a lot of uh, cult-like tendencies. It's really tough to leave because the community is so tight-knit. And it's built on these teachings, which were brought by one man. So a lot of these um, rules were built on what this man would say. And I think anytime you follow one teacher who claims to have an element of truth that no one else has found, I think that's very concerning. And it's also very tough to like leave and speak out against that because of the teachings that he said um, destruction would come upon you if you left. And then this next question is a two-parter. Uh, being that you have put this book out there, how would you describe your relationship with your family as well as your relationship with your children and husband? How do they differ? <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I think with my family, I see how many parents got wrapped up in these teachings in the early years because they were promised that their family would turn out perfectly and they would have success. So it was very appealing. But it's interesting. I think that that relationship, um, it, it, different ones have responded better than others. And I, I know that at the end of the day, my parents want what's best for me, and as does all of my family. And I would hope that um, even they could hear that. And my heart in this book is not one out of um, anything, but wanting to speak out harshly in a way against Bill Gothard's teachings, which were harmful. But at the same time, as the people who are still following these teachings, I get it. I see how they viewed these teachings as good because I was there. I followed it so devoutly. And I want them to be able to just examine these teachings according to the Bible and see that it doesn't add up.
Mm-hmm. And my life today, um, my relationship with my kids, it's interesting when you come out of something like that, it changes the way I view parenting. And, um, I really want to show my girls that I still love Jesus and I walk closely with him and I want them to see I'm the same person I am at church as I am at home by the grace of God and for them to see that. And, um, I want to encourage my girls to grow and be women who are able to even see some of the sides of life that maybe I didn't have um, as a young woman in that setting.